Well, hi everyone. I am very happy to be here telling you the story of Virginia Davis. And I think the timing of this coming up on the Walt Disney Company's 100th anniversary is super exciting. So here's a little bit about Virginia Davis. She was born in 1919. She was a child actor and began working for Walt Disney in 1923. Yes, when Virginia's contract was signed, it was the official start date for the Walt Disney Company. You might have also heard people say that it was started by a mouse. Virginia would start speeches by saying it was actually started by a little girl, and that little girl was me. Virginia's first film was Alice's Wonderland, where a little girl visits a cartoon studio, and later that night dreams she is in the cartoons like she just saw. In these letters written in 1923 by Walt Disney, you can see that Walt was asking that Virginia move to Hollywood so they could continue making the Alice comedies. There were other little girls that played Alice, but Virginia was the favorite and the original. Virginia adored Walt Disney as a director. She of course called him Uncle Walt, which was common in the studio. She remembered that it was a great time, full of fun, adventure, and let's pretend. He would direct me in, in a large manner with great sweeping gestures. One of my favorite pictures was Alice's Wild West show. I was always the kid with curls, but I was really a tomboy and that picture allowed me to act tough. I took great joy in that. Virginia even kept those little BB guns and it has been said that she would wander Hollywood Boulevard, the filming location for many of her films, and shoot out the streetlights. Virginia was a feisty and an amazing lady. Virginia continued working in film and on stage for all the major studios of the era. At one point, Walt even taught her how to ink and paint for animated features at the studio. She was very proud of her place in Disney history and loved all of the opportunities it gave her throughout her entire life. Even in Virginia's late 80s, she still received mail from around the world. Virginia is an official Disney legend, and she won an Annie Award for her early work with Walt. Virginia's family is very proud of her work, and they were so excited to take photos of her great-grandchildren at Legends Plaza at the Walt Disney Animation Studio. So Walt Disney and my mother's father, who was Thomas Jefferson um, Davis, drove out in the family's car from Kansas City, Missouri, together to California. My mom and her mom rode the train. Walt went back and drove in the car with my grandfather to get out to California. All right, so when mom first came out to Hollywood, she wanted to be a boy. So she would hide her hair under her hat and call herself Bobby and go to Griffith Park and play with all the boys, the little t-ball and whatnot. And then her dad had to call her Bobby, Bobby, time to go home. So um, my mom, when she would film the movies, her father had to be on the set to make sure she behaved. And he would literally stand behind Walt where Walt was directing her and make sure she was a good girl and did as she was told. Um, her mother did not care for acting. Um, they say that she did and she pushed her into it. And no, she didn't want anything to do with it. It was actually my mother's aunt that uh, was in the very first film, filmed in her home in Kansas City. Um, and she was the one that handled anything uh, for the show business. So Alice's Day at Sea was the first one that was filmed out here in California. Mom loved it, never seen the beach before. It was so much fun. Her mother and father are both on set. There's pictures of them. Um, she had a great time with the dog and everything. And the poster from that one holds the record in the Guinness World Book of Records for the most ever paid for a poster. So somewhere in the 20s when Walt started dating Lillian, um, he did not have a car. So he would borrow my mother's parents' car, Tin Lizzie, with a rumble seat. My mother would ride in the rumble seat while he dated Lillian as a chaperone, because in those days you didn't go out without a chaperone. So even at five or six, she was chaperoning their day. When you ask her, what's it like going to work with Walt? When she's four and a half, five, six years old, making Alice comedies, she said it was storytelling. He would tell these huge stories on how to act out. He didn't just direct her, he made it like he was reading a story to her. So for her, it was fun. It was story time. She would go and play. Also, if he saw other kids around that were watching what they were doing, he would pay them 50 cents or something to be in the movies. And he used to put down um, a sheet over the billboards on Hollywood and Vine, um, Hollywood and Highland, I think, um, and film right there. I met Virginia Davis. Later on in life, she came back to Hollywood and we just struck up a friendship. She's just like Tinkerbell. Anyway, uh, 
we went up to Bass Lake to do a uh, Disney Anna show. And she, oh, she's full of spunk. She was at the Atwoods. And Bill Atwood said, now we have the beautiful stairway and I have to help you. I can take those stairways two at a time, she said. And he says, <clears throat> no, that wouldn't do any good for me, said Bill Atwood with the Disney Anna, if anything happened to Virginia Davis. And he left. So a little bit later, Virginia's saying good night, and we're gonna go downstairs where our bedrooms were. And Bill was just walking into the room, and she's going down the stairs. He couldn't help her. He kept talking, and suddenly we hear bam, <laughs> like this. Bill runs for the stairway and looks, <gasps> and there is uh, Virginia sitting at the bottom of the landing, looking up, and she said, so there. And she hit the side of the, the wall again to show where she got the sound from. She got up and walked off to the, her bedroom. That was Virginia. When she was about 86 or 87, she said, I want to get another dog like my Buster Brown, who was a brown standard poodle. Now those are big dogs, I mean, and so we thought she'd go get a six-year-old, seven-year-old fine one or something. No, by gum. She went out and bought a new one. And I have to tell you about Buster Brown. He had her trained. He would wake her up at 5.30 in the morning to take him out. No, no excuses. She was up at him at 5.30. And then when she was talk on the phone to anyone, Buster Brown would sit there and bark, 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 bark at her. And she would keep saying, I don't know why Buster is barking at me. And we kept saying, because he doesn't, he's jealous. He doesn't want you to talk to anyone else. Um, just before mom passed, so she was older and again, kind of suffering from memory loss. I'm trying to organize stuff and I'm going through a lot of her stuff that was in the storage unit. And I keep finding newspaper clippings on Mary Daly. Mary Daly does this, Mary Daly does that. Mary Daly's the star of this movie. And I'm like, who the heck is Mary Daly? So mom, who's Mary Daly? She blushes and she giggles, you know, and she's, oh, that's me. Uh, what? <laughs> who? Oh yeah, I was Mary Daly for a while. <laughs> Along with several other names. What other names? I don't remember. Mom, she was, oh, I change my name all the time. And I'm like, so there's all kinds of movies out there with your, different, yeah. Well, Mary Daly made three films. One is called Hands Across the Rockies. 1941, I want to say. Uh, she's actually the star of the darn movie. She's on the poster. I now have it on my wall. Um, she made, I can't remember one of the other movies. And then she made something, um called Escort Girls. I mean, she did a ton of stuff. I don't know if she did voiceovers for um, Disney for years. Um, and then and when she was 16 and needed a job, Walt hired her to do ink and paint and personally taught her to do the ink and paint. Yeah. On her 16th birthday, and this is one of my like treasured items that I have, he gave her a 14-carat um, gold Mickey Mouse necklace. So not only was Virginia Davis in the Alice comedies, but they actually asked her to come in and do a little bit of example dancing for Daisy Duck's premiere in Mr. Duck Steps Out. So if you go back and watch that cartoon and you see the way that Daisy is dancing, Virginia Davis was the example for her in her premiere cartoons. So thank you, Virginia, for Miss Daisy Duck. But she moved back to Connecticut in the 50s. Yeah, she met my dad. He was in the service. When he came back from being in World War II, they decided to move back east. And then she still did um, a bunch of stuff back there. She was in a soap opera called One Man's Family. Um, she had a lot of different TV commercials I have pictures from. Um, and a lot of acting on um, Broadway. She had a oh. lot of plays. She loved doing plays. She did that for a long time. And then, you know, she had two kids and became a realtor. <laughs> of all things. We're very lucky that we have access to Virginia Davis's memory book that she created herself to share with all of us. And in this memory book is a speech that she did, and she has it on note cards. So let's go back in time and pretend we're listening to her do this speech. Thank you. I'm so happy and excited to be here and see all you loyal Disney fans. I've spoken to many of you and understand that most of you have never seen any of these earliest films of Walt Disney. They are not on tape. Some are in the Disney archives under the tender care of Dave Smith and others are scattered. The Alice comedies, as you know, was the very first time that live action was combined with cartoon characters. 
a long time ago, in the far off land of Kansas City, Missouri, there was, wait a minute, this sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Well, it was a fairy tale to this little girl, and like all fairy tales, it should have a beginning. Let me supply that beginning. Back in Kansas City in 1923, I'd been doing some film commercials for a film ad company, a firm for which Walt had also worked before starting his own firm, Lavagrams. These film clips were shown in motion picture theaters before or between features. Walt saw one of these commercials, which featured a little girl eating Warnaker's bread with great gusto and enthusiasm. Walt had been toying with the idea of an Alice in Wonderland approach to combining live action with cartoon characters, and when he saw me, he decided to contact my mother to see if she would be interested in having her daughter Virginia play the part of Alice in a series of one reel comedies. She was charmed by him, and they agreed to make a test, or should I say pilot. It was shot at my parents' home at 1605 East Armour Boulevard. After it was completed, a 20-year-old Walt, or 21-year-old Walt, left for Hollywood, California, with a copy of the film in the hope of finding a distributor. He was successful. A contract was offered by the New York distributor M.J. Winkler with the stipulation that I was to play Alice. My parents, Margaret and Jeff Davis, agreed to the terms, and on October 16, 1923, a contract was signed, and in late November, the Disney studio and the first Alice comedy was in production in Hollywood, California. You have to realize there was no studio as such at the time. First, a rented office, then onto a storefront office. For outside location, Walt rented a vacant lot near Kingswell. On this lot was a large billboard. On the back of this sign, he spread a white canvas drop covering the height and the width of the advertisement, extending only about 10 feet on the ground from the base. It was here that all pantomime live section was photographed. Budget dictated it was to be done in one take, with Walt doing the directing and Roy, his brother, the photography. Tiny sets were built by Walt, Roy, and his friends on that same lot, but these sets were just a shell, not elaborate as they are today. In other scenes, local people and streets were used, and some of my playmates were just some of the local children curious to watch the strange goings-on. Remember, there was no Screen Actors Guild then. Oh, I forgot to tell you, that vacant lot in rural Hollywood was the northeast corner of Hollywood Boulevard and Vermont. Looking back, it was a great time, full of adventure, fun, and let's pretend. I adored and idealized Walt, as any little four-and-a-half-year-old would, and I still do. He will always have a very special place in my heart, as I'm sure he has in yours. His spirit has continued to bring more fairy tales, joy, and laughter to people of all ages, as only an animator and one who is young at heart can. I think animators are very special, with twinkling eyes, a joy of life, an understanding of love and pathos, a wild sense of imagination, and a great big abundance of talent. I admire them all, and I personally feel privileged to have been part of the history of Walt Disney and the animated motion picture industry. Thank you. I can tell you that I, for one, am very excited that I've gotten to learn more about Virginia Davis and her time with Walt Disney at the beginning of the Walt Disney Animation Studio. 